Okay, so this is a little quick video on how we're doing our caustic bath for the nano coating of the plates. And you can see we live in a climate that is chilly at night, so we try to keep them all good and warm. So what we did the other day was we have the <laughs> unveiling. Um, slow down just a second. What oh. we did the other day was we <clears throat> put, there's plenty of videos on this, we put a good layer of the lye in the bottom of the containers. Each container has a zinc coated mesh on the bottom. And then we hung our nice little very copper plates in there. And then we poured <laughs> a little bit of boiling water in there. She's putting on her gloves. Um, we poured enough boiling water in there to fill it up, you know, just below the wire mesh. You see the the wire mesh in there. We put just enough water be just below it so it was boiling and then trapped the boiling water in there and the steam keeping our heads back because of this you know the fumes and such and then quickly covered it all with this setup here. You know we have a heating blanket $29.95 at Walmart and uh, <laughs> it stays warm for uh, about 10 hours and then underneath I'll show it here in a minute is a seed warming um, panel, I guess you would call it. I think it stays at a constant 70, which is a lot warmer than our garage at night, which is probably, what do you think, in the 40s and 50s? Yeah, and so this little seed warming plate, and that stays warm. It doesn't have a timer on it. Got that also at Walmart for 1995. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, here we go. It's, it's for seeds. It's for a um, greenhouse. So this is actually the second day, but we're taking them out. Um, they were still pretty darn copper after that first hot caustic bath, mm -hmm. right? And then um, what we're and they were all still in this position where they're just kind of hanging in there. We use little um, plastic coated paper clips just because they don't rust and they're easy to handle and fix. You don't have to cut a bunch of things. And so she's gonna do the part that we normally do at this point, which is. <laughs> what do we do? Oh, oh no. <laughs> which is, uh -huh. just... so in this container is some of the caustic liquid from a That's... previous batch, and just give them a little spritz. Mm -hmm. Make sure that all of them get a little, little coverage and a little spritz. I'm gonna do you want that back over there. Uh -huh. There we go. And they're all kind of hanging on a rack, you know, like a like you'd hang out the clothes. And... <laughs> Meat. <laughs> yeah, and still, when you do this spraying, you know, caustic some of the, spray. Yeah, some of the spray is gonna come up in fumes in the air, so we kind of, you know, hold our heads back. Um, you don't want to spray it, any of that spray to get around the table and on things, so that's why she's holding that up there. Um, nice long gloves, and it does start to get a little bit of air about it, right? So you kind of lean back, and then uh, we're gonna trap that in there. And then put Turn it back around, in get the, the back container. side. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put the lids back on and then we'll put them back down in that blue container on the little seed warmer with the blankie over them. And that's our method for the moment. You can also, if you got a nice sunny day, you can take them out in the sun, right? And sit them, we've been sitting them out on the ground in the sunlight when it's a hot day and let the sun bake and steam them all day long. And then, um, so in between, like after she's sprayed them, we're going to come back and do the discharging process with the multimeter. And that needs to be done in between each time you do the spraying and whatnot. We, he says every four to six hours. And sometimes we do that with the meter and sometimes we'll take them off their little rack and hang them on a little 12 inch clothesline out in the yard and have Gaia help us to discharge them. We've done it that way too. which. Basically, a you know wet copper plate touching the wet grass helps to ground and align the <laughs> align the the nano coating particles mm -hmm. and those things. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. All right, so we're ready to do the discharge process, is what it's called. <laughs> da da, and they're dancing. It is in important or useful to have the plates wet when you do that. Obviously electricity and stuff moves more quickly on wet structures. So we just completed the spraying of it and then we'll resume at this point. 
this is a multimeter. I'm shouting, aren't I? This is a multimeter, mm -hmm. and and I don't know about the number where it goes to, but I'll go ahead and put it. That's where the, tape uh, Heather marked it, so I don't have to remember. But this is a digital multimeter. There's there are multimeters that are got the little meter and the needle that yeah. swings back and forth. I use a mul the digital because I just prefer digital. But they'll both do the same thing, and there is a difference in the price range. So there. And I'm going to add that the setting that we use is 200 millivolts is what I was instructed to use for this part of the process. And it, okay, mm -hmm. does it matter where the black or the red one go on these plates? Not like the coils now. This is different. Correct. I'm, okay. My understanding is it does not matter. Does not. Just pick one. Yes. Mm hmm on the coils, it does matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little more. Oh, I guess it would be yeah. over here, right? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Notice how it's bouncing around on the numbers. It bounces from negative to positive, from 5 to 200 or whatever. And sometimes I'll sit and allow it to go to zero, but if it just keeps bouncing, bouncing, I'll, I'll sit for about a minute and then come off. It'll usually come down to Yeah, it usually, right? they usually do. Mm -hmm. Pretty quick. Yeah. So we've got some smaller pieces that we're going to use play for other with. purposes. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the larger plates for the Gens collection tubs. You're right. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it doesn't really matter the number there itself. Um, I saw it's zero, more zero, just an entertainment of watching the thing move up and down and when I tested and asked into you know what the purpose of this is so that we could have accurate words we're using with this um, yes it is discharging the electrical current that has built up on the plates it is assisting in aligning the nanoparticles so that they are all lined up in nice little um, like getting their ducks in a row type of a thing <laughs> Um, so that the superconductor can work efficiently once it's created. If you don't do this process, you get a lot of haphazard nanoparticles um, thrown and sprinkled all over the surface, but not necessarily lined up in a way that they um, are going to flow the energy, not just electricity, so that they flow whatever it is you're asking them to superconduct, they will superconduct. Some people say to do this for about 10 seconds. You know, I find it's maybe, you know, more like, you know, up to a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, yeah. maybe, on each one. Yeah, because yeah. these things, I think they're just playing, playing <laughs> with me sometimes, right? <laughs> the way they bounce on the numbers, it's, it's, it's amazing. And we do have little, you know, holes in each of the plates. Sometimes I'll yeah, just like, stick the multimeter in, in each little hole and, and walk away. Now, Linda doesn't have gloves on right now, even though there's caustic and stuff in there, but she's not touching the caustic. She's right. just tapping the little plates. And and putting the probes, I guess you could call them, uh, one, it doesn't matter because there's nothing electrical here that's going to harm you, but you, you just put one on, I put one on one side and one on the other side. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you put it on the top or the side sides or down the way. It really doesn't matter as long right. as they're you know apart yeah that's what i understand it I yeah move them all around and play with them right know? right sometimes i do just i just fun. i'll just hold them up there on the top shoulders and you probably don't want to yeah. scratch it yeah right, with the yeah. little meter tips yeah. because you're trying not you're trying to leave the nano particles intact as they build up their 30 to forty thousand layers yeah. over the next three or four processes of this so this is zero what about the second time that we've done the spritzing in the in the no two days warm bucket two days I've done this so a number of times so this is, and we know. do the discharging about every four to six hours yeah in yeah. between the the spritzing and the soaking again two and days. it's getting there pretty I mean these are pretty good and dark um, you know, the, the idea is to get them to where they're black and there's no um, copper shining through. I see a little copper shining through on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so we would probably do this a few more times until we just mm -hmm. feel like it's done, right? Yeah, it's kind of a sensation. You kind of, I guess, kind of know what it's... Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. If it's black, it's no longer absorbing light. Yeah. And that's my understanding is the point that you're trying to get to. It's not a shiny black. It's more like a matte black. Yeah. You know, right now it looks shiny because it's wet. So we'll take them out of here. When we feel like the process is complete, we'll take them out of here. I usually just lay them on some kind of a drying pad <coughs> in open air. Let them kind of cure before I even try to wash off the caustic liquid. Mm -hmm. right? I just kind of let them do that. And yeah, they'll get a little bit white and um, funky because it, as the caustic dries, it makes crystals. And then I'll just kind of give them a dip in, in distilled water, give them a little rinse. Sometimes I even just kind of lay them out on the wet grass for a while because I think Gaia is real helpful with some of this stuff that we're doing. And uh -huh. I ask for her input and assistance. And the grounding. And the grounding. Yeah. Right? And complete its final like discharge on the earth. I like them being out in the sun. You know, if we incorporate some of that into creating the plates, I think it's all helpful. Anything else that you can think of? Mm. Part of the project. Have fun. Have fun. Play some good have music. Fun. Have fun. Play. Little wine. <laughs> little wine. Yeah, remember your wine. You know, got to have the wine. Keep a light heart and know that it's it's alchemy and the purpose is more S expansion for yourself than smile when you're just the, making when you're the playing stuff. with it. Right. Smile, smile for the nano. <laughs> smile. I'm still recording, by the oh, way. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Signing off. Okay, this is about day three of the nano coating process. Nice warm day today, so sitting them out here after a little bit of a spritz, fresh spritz on each side. They're looking really good. So we'll just kind of let them sit out here in the nice hot sunshine we'll do the and let that get a steamy that one says, what steam. About me? Well, I'm just showing them open and closed. 